One of the things that happened in the last week is the uh, reintroduction of the PRO Act, and that's uh, protecting the right to organize. It's a bill that uh, was first introduced maybe two years ago around there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, given sort of the partisan nature of Congress, a lot, uh, you know, not a lot has happened. And, you know, I think that it's unlikely that this is going to pass right now, but the, the fact that it was reintroduced, I think, is a response to a lot of the positive union talk that uh, Joe Biden has been putting out there. And he, while he hasn't been able to get things like the PRO Act through Congress, he's done a lot of work through the agencies to uh, include pro-union language sure. in, um, you know, a lot of the policies and the, the, the regulations. And, 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 and let me ask you, Ed, what does the PRO Act do? I mean, tell, tell, give us a couple of high, what, highlights. What doesn't the PRO Act do? I Interesting. Mean, really? So it's a... Uh, it does a number of things. So it would include things like uh, interest arbitration. Which we've talked about. Right, uh, which generally falls under the umbrella of uh, promoting collective bargaining agreements, promoting right. first collective bargaining agreements. So when you first form a union, you're not going to sit there for five years struggling to negotiate an agreement. Yep. It'll uh, create things like uh, interest arbitration and a rule to, um, you know, for the NLRB to order bargaining within 10 days of you know, the, the formation. So of no, the no more delays. These right. corporate delays. What about like card check? Would it allow unions to uh, get um, recognized just simply by signing cards? Yeah, promoting. Uh, if you have a majority of workers, just sign recognition cards. That's all you have to do. Doing away do then with with uh, all the anti union captive audience meetings right. and it, all that it, kind of stuff. It would ban captive audience meetings. Yep. Um, and it would uh, close a loophole that uh, stops people from filing uh, financial forms to disclose their union busting activity. One thing I learned is that union busting is a three hundred and forty million dollar oh, per year industry, God. and that's that's what's re reported. I bet it's even f bigger for because, sure because law firms do it too, and I, yeah. they, I don't even think some of them report. As a matter of fact, a lot of union busters don't report, and they should. But once again, what's the penalty for a lot of this stuff? Nothing. Right. Slap well, on the wrist. To that point, I think the the most important thing in my eyes uh, that's in the PRO Act is it gives authority for meaningful penalties to be levied um, against employers who violate their workers I rights so it. for an unfair labor practice which you know they're committed all the time um, up to a fifty thousand dollar fine can be assessed for an unfair labor practice and for employers who are repeat offenders it can be up to a hundred thousand dollars good so I mean as I said unfair labor practices um, they occur Every day on workplaces, all you know, in workplaces across the country, across the state. So but, this will, this will give some teeth, as opposed to just posting a notice that says, "Hey, I'm sorry, we won't do it again." And then going and doing it again and, and posting again and notice. again and again. Right. Yeah. Um, it's like ground. Hi, I'm Ed Maher, and you just watched a clip from the Workers' Mic. You can listen every Sunday on 720 WGN at eight o'clock in the morning, and also find us on YouTube at nine o'clock in the morning.